The crib. It's hard to think of anything more traditional at Christmas time. And yet 800 years ago, when it was invented by a man called Francis of Assisi, it was seen as something radical. Francis was a religious revolutionary. He took the gospel out of churches filled with gold and marble and silk and into the real world. The first crib was in a cave. The figures were real people, it had real hay and real smelly animals. 800 years on, the Catholic Church has a new Francis, a new radical who's turning the church upside down, telling priests they're servants, not masters, that they must get out of the churches and mix with ordinary people. A real shepherd, he's told them, must smell of his sheep. It's all reignited the imagination of the world's 1.2 billion Catholics. I think it's a Pope who knows uh, human life and is very close to human people and he knows about suffering and joys of people and he can has a language direct uh, to people and uh, a Pope who uh, gives uh, hope. On the edge of St Peter's Square is a modern crib, the homeless of Rome. Wednesday was the Pope's birthday. Francis invited Marcin, his dog called Bob Marley, and three homeless friends to join him in the Vatican for a birthday breakfast. Yes, Papa Francesco, Konrad, Wojtek, Marcin, and Marcin, and Marley. What kind of man is the Pope? It is this embrace of the lowly and ostracised throughout Pope Francis's first nine months in office which has touched the hearts of the ordinary faithful. No, Pablo. The street sweepers of Rome have devised their own crib, hoping that the Pope will make an unannounced visit there this Christmas. Such is the impact of the Francis effect that people are returning to church who had previously left disillusioned over scandals like sex abuse by priests. I think that before this pope, uh, nobody wanted to, to speak about these kind of problems, but now they are speaking a lot. This pope brought out this, this problem that it was a big deal in the church. I have a Catholic background because I went to a Catholic school until I was 12 years old. And then uh, when I saw all the bad things that the priests were doing at school, I didn't want to go there anymore. But is there substance behind this dramatic change of style? There is a lot which needs practical action. The Pope's entree is piled high. There's been a commission to set up with the whole issue of sex abuse, uh, a, co a commission to, to handle those issues, to investigate. Um, there has also been uh, a series of issues uh, relating to the reform of the Vatican Bank and, and more stringent, more transparent measures that are being uh, put into place the reform of the um, of the bureaucracy and that's the big one and that's the big one and that began by the establishing of this particularly I suppose by the the establishing of the council of eight cardinals who have been meeting uh, regularly they met in October they met in December they're meeting again in February and um, there's a sense here in in the city of of that reform really gathering momentum the commission to tackle sex abuse has only just been set up, but Francis has acted swiftly to tackle financial scandal. Through the gates behind me is the Vatican Bank, or the Institute for Religious Works, as it's known around here. The new Pope has moved swiftly to bring change. He's closed 600 suspect bank accounts. He's put in a new regulator. And he's appointed an outside committee of experts, including a female law professor from Harvard, to recommend long-term structural reform. Marley. But are some of the Pope's big gestures little more than PR? The homeless men who breakfasted with Francis were still sleeping rough in a Vatican porch the following night. Is the Pope going to find you somewhere to live? A bed? But that's the way we live. We like to move around. The Pope has millions of other people to look after with bigger problems. But if Marcin does not expect more, there will be many others who want substantial change rather than symbols. To turn the Vatican from the master of the church to its servant will require a scale of reform which is massive. Working out how to change the papacy from an absolute monarchy to something more collegial is the task of the new council of cardinal advisers.
think it's the biggest change in the government of the church for over a thousand years. <laughs> he wants to know what ordinary Catholics think on all sorts of issues like contraception and homosexuality and so on. I think his fundamental concern is that uh, together as a church we must be responsible. So he wants to devolve I think a lot of responsibility from his own personal position to the College of Bishops and he hopes that bishops in their own diocese will give real responsibility to the people. And I think he also wants each of us to take responsibility for our own lives. In the end, we've got to be adults. We've got to be grown up. And so we could say that what I think Pope Francis wants is a church for grown-ups. Francis wouldn't call it democracy, but it feels something rather like that. The big question about the consultation and the wider work of the Cardinal Advisers is how radical will be the reforms which emerge? Big change is clearly underway in the Vatican, but rather like this crib, which behind the cloth is entitled St Francis 1223 to Pope Francis 2013. We won't know until it's unveiled just before Christmas how significant a work in progress is going to be. And we may have to wait a bit longer than that to find out about the extent of the reform within the Vatican itself.